dear students in the last lesson we talked about conventional sources of energy we talked about fossil fuels like coal and petroleum and natural gas today we'll talk about non conventional sources of energy as we have already studied energy broadly means the capacity of something whether it's a person or animal or a physical system to do work and produce changes in science we describe it as how much potential that is power a physical system has to change we have two sources of energy one is conventional sources of energy which we have studied and now we talk about non conventional sources of energy these sources of energy are the one which are comparatively new and they are not very common but we find that keeping in mind the recent problem of pollution in the world such sources of energy can be greatly beneficial now let us talk about them one by one first what are these non conventional energy resources those energy resources which are renewable and ecologically safe that means these energy resources are not exhaustible we can renew them like running water like solar rays and they are ecologically safe like hydroelectric power right they do not have too much of pollution examples of such non conventional source energy are the solar energy which you get from the sun the wind energy the biomass energy which you get from gobar gas and other things the ocean energy in the form of tidal energy or sea wave energies or ocean thermal energy that is the heat or we can also have such energy in the form of geothermal energy geo is earth thermal is heat when you start using earth's heat at some places you have these geothermal energy resources power plant like in manikaran in himachal pradesh in our country where hot geysers erupt out and we start using that steam and convert it into electric power and then you also have nuclear energy some energy resources are non renewable which we already studied like coal petroleum and natural gas they get exhausted we can't renew them in a short span of time now there's some more facts about energy first about 16% of global final energy consumption comes from renewable with 10% coming from traditional biomass which is mainly used for heating and 3.4% comes from hydroelectricity this is how we have the supply of power the non renewable in the form of small hydro hydro projects modern biomass wind solar geothermal and biofuels accounted for another 3% and are growing very rapidly these sources of energy substantiate the main source of energy that means they add on to the existing sources of energy the share of renewable in electricity generation is around 19% which is good with 16% of global electricity coming from hydroelectric power that is from the rivers running water or dams and 3% from non renewable so this is how the energy uh, scenario is there in the whole world now we talk about these energy resources one by one and the first one which we pick up is the wind energy if you have been to jaisalmer you will observe that while entering this desert city you find huge windmills similar is the case in many parts of gujarat and now in coastal areas where we have installed these huge windmills right these windmills rotate there is a rotor there and they convert the kinetic energy which is energy due to the circular motion of these blades into electrical energy now let us talk in detail about wind energy wind energy wind energy in this the air flow can be used to run wind turbines 
you just saw the huge turbines the wind energy is used in windmills which converts the kinetic energy of the wind into mechanical or electrical energy you must have seen these huge windmills being used from time immemorial immemorial in holland which is very famous for wind energy the kinetic energy of wind can be used to do mechanical work like lifting water from the wells or grinding grains in flour in flour mills so it is not only to generate electricity you can use this wind power to lift water from the wells as well as to grind our grains in a flour mill a single wind mill can produce only a very small amount of electricity that is why you have series of these wind mills in a row and that's why this entire area where we set up such wind mills is known as a wind farm large number of wind mills in a large area are coupled together to produce more electricity in wind energy farms we have such farms in jaisalmer in gujarat and in some parts of south india the minimum wind speed required is 15 km per hour that is the minimum wind energy which is required to propel to rotate in india at present the wind potential wind power potential is around 100 100 1020 megawatt and the largest wind farm is near kanyakumari in tamil nadu which generates around 380 megawatt of electricity so that also is a important general knowledge which is know that our largest wind farm is in kanyakumari now we talk about the some pictures of the wind farm you can see that there are series of windmills when uh, these rotor uh, rotors are there one after another in a series and they can convert they can change the direction depending upon the direction of the wind and the first picture which we see is a little traditional style of windmill so this is a picture of a wind farm now what are the advantages and disadvantages of wind energy let us study this now wind energy is a renewable source of energy it doesn't get exhausted it does not cause pollution this is very very important that is why it is ecologically beneficial the recurring cost is less now what does that mean the initial cost of establishing a wind rotor is high these windmills cost enough in the initial stages but later on the maintenance cost of these windmill is not much that is why the recurring cost is less so ultimately it comes out to be a cheap source of energy once the wind turbine is built the energy it produces does not cause greenhouse gases because there is hardly any emission so it does not cause any greenhouse gases so it is good from from ecological point of view but it has got some disadvantage the first one is that the wind is not available at all times you must observe in our school even at billa vidya mandir summer during summer time you find the wind's velocity is high but during winters the wind velocity is not much even in the plains where you stay some of you must observe that during winters it is not so windy sometimes you can even afford to play outdoor badminton but that is not the case in summers so it has got seasonal variation in the wind velocity thus in certain time of the year these windmills may not be too effective secondly it requires a large area of land because these windmills are huge in size so lots of area is used in uh, in setting up these windmills that is why most of the time the preferred area is the wasteland where agriculture cannot take place and the wind speed is good and at the same time it requires a minimum wind speed of 15 km per hour which is also not available at all the places so we find that it has got lots of advantages but at the same time wind energy also has got some disadvantages now let's move on to one of the largest source of power that is the solar energy what do you mean by solar energy the energy which you obtain from the sun in the form of heat and light in the two ways this energy is derived in the form of solar radiation solar radiation is the way the sun rays moves out or goes out of the sun or maybe it's 
emits out of the sun and we receive on the earth surface in the form of terrestrial insulation we, for, we we receive sun rays in the form of insulation what is insulation the incoming solar radiation is known as insulation the solar energy received by the earth space is approximately 1.4 kilojoules per second also known as solar constant you will study about this in little higher classes the heat energy is used not only for cooking which you must be knowing is also used in many other devices like solar water heater systems you must have seen the solar water heater systems are becoming very popular in our country solar furnaces where you can need heat in the factories is also used to generate light so in this way we find that there are multiple uses of solar energy a solar power you must have seen these solar panels in or photovoltaic cells in the rooftops at many places we can use them as solar cookers solar hot water systems solar dryers solar air heaters solar desalination system where you remove the salt and solar batteries now you must have seen an example of i'll give you some examples but first one is the solar cooker where you can see that there is a photovoltaic cell here and it receives the sun rays and it transmits the sun rays inside there are four boxes which are lying inside and the food is kept inside and it takes uh, it can generate power up to 100 to 140 degrees celsius and this way the food will be cooked though it takes more time but it is good it will save lots of fuel another example which you have must seen and very commonly observed nowadays in india also is solar water heater systems where the solar power is used to heat water during winters in india we got advantage that india is a tropical country so we get very strong sun in many parts of the country in the hilly areas we have this issue because we have lots of overcast days because if there will be overcast days if there will be cloudy days then the impact of solar heaters would be less another example is the solar cell which you use to generate power it is a device which converts solar energy into electrical energy the solar cells are made up of semiconductors like silicon germanium and zeolium right and they can help us in generating power you must have seen many street lights are depending upon sun very commonly used example you must have seen that many uh, smaller generators are using solar powers so solar panels are very common you must have seen a solar lamp uh, sometimes in many places where especially in the hilly areas where uh, transmission lines are absent right so there people put the government puts these solar lamps and they can let up in the evening once the sun sets these uh, bulb starts illuminating now what are the advantages of solar power we have got so many advantages a after initial investment that is the spend of money all the electricity you produce is free b it is found in abundant there is no limit to it it is everlasting right sun will always be there it is almost it is available almost everywhere it is free from any political boundaries solar power is available to all the countries irrespective of the location right it's a government of india also gives you many invest uh, many incentives that is if you want to install solar powers the government in our country will give you some loans or they will give you some concessions because they want you to have more and more solar power more and more use of solar power if you start using solar power then your electricity bill which you get from the government will also be reduced so ultimately it is very very cost effective that means it is not very costly it will save money for you so there are lots of advantages for energy it has got some disadvantages that if you have overcast sky in that case it will not be very very useful especially during rainy season now we talk about hydroelectric power that is the power which you get from running water you must have seen a dam somewhere 
right in the dams the water comes there is a reservoir at the back side of the dam and the water comes down from steep slopes and this water which is running helps in rotating hydro turbines and these hydro turbines rotate and change kinetic energy into electrical energy and we get lots of energy in fact in india in our state uttarakhand especially is very very popular for hydroelectric power because we have lots of perennial rivers the rivers which flow throughout the year and they also have steep gradient that means they have steep slopes so these slopes steep slopes helps in having high water velocity if the water velocity will be high the the uh, hydro turbines will rotate faster and will have plenty of electricity and at the same time there is no pollution from hydroelectric electricity that is a very big advantage another important advantage is that when you have such reservoirs or dams these dams can also be used for multiple purposes such as fishing water sports boating transportation so it has got multiple uses that is why we also call a dam as a multi purpose project you must be knowing about tehri dam which we have in our state in gadwal area and it generates so much of electricity that many northern states in our country are using that this is a way hydroelectric power is generated you can see there are sluice gates in the dams which allows the water to pass through it and through the pen stocks the water comes down the slope with high velocity and tremendous pressure and this pressure helps in rotating hydro turbines which ultimately uh, changes kinetic energy into electrical energy there are transformers which change and the best part is that this water which has been used in rotating the turbines can be reused in the form of canals if you can see there is a downstream outlet which can where the water is reused in the canals for irrigation and for other purposes so that's the advantage of electric power i think now with this diagram it is amply clear how power is generated in a dam so what are the advantages of hydroelectric power it has the flowing water is renewable source of energy you can renew it again and again once the uh, rain takes place again the water the reservoir will be full of water the electricity produced does not cause any pollution the water stored in dams can be used to control floods and for irrigation because when you have these reservoirs they do not allow the water to cause floods because you control the water once a dam is constructed electricity can be produced at a constant rate almost non stop often large dams become tourist attractions in their own right like the bhakra dam on the border of punjab and himachal pradesh is a very famous tourist attraction similarly we have tehri dam in our state which is very very popular tourist attraction but it has got some disadvantages first one is that the initial cost is very high you have to invest huge amount of money in the construction of these hydro energy dams and they take long time to get constructed they occupy large areas which could be used for forest or agriculture and sometimes you have to displace people in a big way because the areas of the towns which are on the river banks now they get inundated inundated means they get flooded like in case of tehri dam that entire old tehri town is inundated now and so people had to move out and the government constructed a new township known as new tehri similarly in uh, on the border of madhya pradesh and gujarat they came out with a new project namada sagar project where on river narmada they constructed the dam and there the old town of harsud in mp was completely inundated or flooded so the people had to be displaced so here what happens is uh, sometimes there are socio economic consequences which are not good for local people but on the whole we find that dam are very very important because when the country has to progress you require plenty of power
now we talk about biogas biogas is when you start using biotic products like like animal waste uh, the forest waste and start generating gases which helps us in rotating turbines and ultimately generating of power you must have seen biogas plants very commonly found in the suburbs or in the village areas sometimes where the bio waste can be used in producing electricity this is also a non conventional source of power where you don't have to spend a huge amount of money and still you can generate some power animal dung can be used in these biogas plants right there are different ways different types of biogas plant this one is a fixed dome type of biogas plant which is underground where even the area will not smell so much and the product which you get even the uh, waste material can be reused in the form of farm manure so what are the advantages of biogas it is a clean non polluting and cheap it directly supplies gas from tank there is hardly any maintenance cost it does not cause any health hazard and it provides us both the fuel as well as the manure because the end product of these bio plants can be used as manure in our agricultural field another important source of non conventional source of power is known as tidal energy i hope you know that tides occur along the sea coast right and they have high tide and low tide in both the cases you find that there is a movement of ocean water and this movement of ocean water can also be used in rotating hydro turbines let us see how it works this is an example a photograph of a tidal energy i'll just show you you can see that beneath the water there are ro uh, ro rotors are there and these rotors starts moving when the water surges ahead when the water water moves ahead in, at the time of high tide now let us talk about the way it works tidal is produced by gravitational force of sun and moon you know what are tides you must have studied in junior classes how tides are caused they are the result of the gravitational force of sun and moon they are produced by making the use of water movement from high tide to a low tide the high tide to a low tide refers to the rise and fall of the water in the ocean you must have seen that when you go to an uh, sea coast uh, the timings of the tides are mentioned there or there sometimes there is an announcement because people are to warned before the oncoming of a high tide a difference of several meters is required between the high tide and low tide during high tide the water level goes up during low tide the water level comes down ocean waves and tides can be made to turn a turbine and generate electricity i just now shown you a diagram or the photograph areas where rivers flow into the sea experience waves and tides and electricity can be generated there it has got much potential like in case of gujarat the areas where river narmada and tapti are meeting the sea there are estuaries and we can have such tidal power plants there as you know we have a large coastline almost 7000 km coastline is there in the country almost 6000 km coastline is of the main country so when such a huge coastline is there in our country and every day you got series of high tides and low tides why don't we use this sea power in generating electricity the periodic rise and fall of sea level due to gravitational attraction of the moon causes these tides so we usually form a tidal barrage which is constructed at a narrow opening between land and sea the movement of water during high tide and low tide can be used to rotate the turbines of generators to produce electricity in india such tidal power sites or locations are in gulf of cambay gulf of gujarat and the sundarban delta these are the favorable locations now quickly we talk about geothermal energy geo is earth thermal is heat now let us see how we are using earth's heat to generate power 
pay attention to what this is very interesting way of generating power and we have a plant in manikaran in himachal pradesh it means the energy harnessed from the hot rocks present inside the earth the hot rocks are there inside the earth you know that once you go inside the earth surface the temperature is high high temperature high pressure steam fields exit below the earth surface in many places there are there they exist below the earth surface when you have rocks with high temperature inside the surface and when the underground water strikes these rocks having high temperature steam is produced now whenever there will there will be an opening this steam will come out of the earth with great pressure at the core the temperature may reach up to 9000 degrees fahrenheit which we have already studied the heat comes from the fission of radioactive material naturally present in the rocks the deeper regions of the earth's crust is very hot which we already studied in chapter 1 the heat melts rocks and forms magma that also we studied when we studied about the formation of volcanoes now this hot spots the hot magma inside what does it do it changes the water inside the earth into steam and this steam has got tremendous pressure so when you drill holes into the hot spots of the steam the steam comes out and this steam can be used in rotating of turbines or generators to produce electricity so here in the earlier cases we saw how water running water generates or rotates the turbines here you see how the heat under pressure helps in rotating the turbines in india there are around 46 hydrothermal areas where you can have such type of geothermal power plants electricity can be generated from these hot springs examples of these hot springs are at manikaran near kullu and sohna in near gurgaon in haryana we have such hot springs see the example of these hot springs how the water from inside comes and how it helps in generating the power this is a diagram of the geothermal power plant now what is the advantage the cost is less because energy is natural you don't have to spend money on fossil fuels like petroleum or diesel or kerosene oil it has got lots of environmental benefits since ancient times people have been using this source of energy for taking bath heating homes preparing food and also is used for heating homes and offices and let me add to this that the water of these hot springs is usually having lots of sulfur which is very good for skin so people having skin disease usually prefer taking bath in these sulfur springs and then at the same time lots of people get jobs in these uh, power plants so in this way we studied about many types of many types of non conventional source of energy now this people talk about biofuels or bio petroleum where they use various biotic products to produce fuel like they have experimenting it with jetrofa plants and converting uh, or making fuel out of it or diesel out of it that means we are using various biotic products and producing power this we call them as biofuels right where we use various parts of trees and generate power from it so in this way you studied about various types of power in various countries you got people are experimenting with biofuels like bioethanol is very widely used in usa nowadays and even in brazil biodiesel is made from vegetable oils animal fats or recycled grasses right biodiesel can have lots of uh, useful uh, uses right so slowly we find that people have started migrating from polluting conventional source of energy to non polluting non conventional sources of energy these are some advantages of biodiesel which we have it and in india also we started producing it in some way 
and lastly we talk about nuclear power plants where you must have seen that how the nuclear energy is used in generating power it is also a non-conventional source of power it has got various advantages and disadvantages and i hope you know that this is it requires the process of nuclear reactions we have got two types of reactions nuclear fission and fusion which you studied in your physics classes so in this way what i want to tell you is that india requires an alternate source of power the conventional source of power like coal petroleum and diesel and natural gas are limited that is why we need to have an alternate source of power which are less polluting and hence we need to spend lots of time and energy in finding new sources of power so this is all about non conventional sources of energy i am sure the concept is now clear to you thank you so much